Not in the name of the most high. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولي الصالحين ونشهد أن محمدا عبد ورسوله إمام الخلق والمرسلين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خس إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you brothers and sisters for joining us tonight and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to reach Laylatul Qadr Allahumma ameen Allahumma ameen and ikhwani wallahi in these very few moments that I have I would like to share a few points with you as we head towards the end of Ramadan I know we had a very exceptional Ramadan in terms of not being uh, close physically together however the hearts have always been closer if, uh, for us that we missed out on salat al-taraweeh in the mosques however Allah would reward us upon, upon our intentions we had a very distinguished Ramadan in which we had a lot of solitude a lot of khalwa with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts it however th there is no doubt that this type of Ramadan has taken its toll in, on, in some cases spiritually, in some cases in terms of motivation, in t some cases in terms of doing more for the sake of Allah. And as we reach the last stretch of Ramadan, we're talking about potentially eight days left of Ramadan, potentially maybe eight nights, nine nights, Allahu Alam. As we reach these last ten nights of Ramadan, I remind myself and the brothers and sisters why we're doing this, why we're fasting the days. Why we're staying up the nights? Why we're reciting Quran? Why we're donating? Why we're making dua? Why we're doing dhikr? Why we're doing good and forbidding evil? Why we're doing all this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حتى إذا جاء أحدهم الموت قال رب ارجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this particular verse describes a person. A person in which death has reached his doorsteps. In which death is coming knocking on this person's door. When death comes to me and you, what, what will we say? We would, I would like to think that we'll be amongst those who say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. However, some people, and the ones that Allah is describing in this verse, are those that will say, Ya Allah. Rabbi Rajirun, Ya Allah, let me go back. Let me go back to the dunya. Please, Ya Allah, give me more time. Ya Allah, give me more time. Why? Listen to what the verse says. I may do good. I may do good. I may do some worship. I may do some salah. I may do some istighfar. I may do some Quran. I may do good. I'll still have money that I haven't donated in the path of Allah. I'll still have zakat that I haven't, I haven't been paying zakat for years. I want to get, pay it. I, I, you know, I still haven't paid sadaqah. I haven't fasted the days that I missed. لعلي أعمل صالحة that I may do good I still haven't put on the hijab I still miss out on Salat al-Fajr I still smoke I still do this and I still haven't repented from that sin لعلي أعمل صالحة إخواني do you know what the unfortunate thing is when the angel of death comes to take my soul and any person's soul there is no going back when the exam paper is lifted off it is your last Breath. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives permission for the angel of death to take that soul, Wallahi, you're with at home with the family, you're asleep in your comfortable bed, you're at work, you're on that bus, you're on that train, you're at, uh, wherever you are in the markets, in the masjid, wherever you are, when the angel of death is commanded to take that soul, that's it. The soul is taken. And then what happens? Imagine, I want you to picture this, Akhi. Sister, I want you to imagine this. The angel of death takes that soul. You're kicking, you're screaming, you're crying. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please give me another hour, just another hour. I want to repent to you, Ya Allah. I want to perform that last sajda, just one more sujood, where I could cry my eyes out. Ya Allah, I've, got, I've been working so hard, I've got so much money, I want to donate some of it. And then what happens? After a long, story, yani a long journey short, your family come, they wash you, they pray on you, they bury you. And then years later, 
the Qiyamah is called upon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instigates and commands Yawmul Qiyamah to start. What will happen on that day, Ikhwani? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it in one of the surahs in the Quran, in Juz Amma, Surah Al Zalzala, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ba'd a'udhu billahi min al shaytan al rajim, Bismillah al Rahman al Rahim. Ida zulzilatil ardu zilzalaha. I'll be in my grave, you'll be in your grave. Everybody that you know and that you don't know will be in their graves. And what will happen? Zulzilatil ardu zilzalaha. The earth will be shaken, shaken its earthquake. And then myself, yourselves, all of humanity, all the, all the uh, uh, living or the dead creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that were in the earth will come out. Then myself and every person will be asking you what's wrong with it. Especially those that did not believe. Especially those that had... Uh, problems in their faith. They'll be like, what's happened? We were in this grave for so long. What's going on? And the verses continue. The verses continue describing the day of judgment, describing the, uh, the, the shake, describing the fear, describing the torment, describing so much. And this surah is one of many surahs that talk about the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the day of judgment in many surah of the Quran, describing which the heavens will be destroyed, the, you know, the, the, the oceans will turn into fire, the mountains will turn into dust, and the list goes on. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says at the end of this surah, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ if a person does an atom weight, an atom weight, ikhwani, of good, they shall see. An atom weight of good. An atom weight of good, ikhwani, could be as little, in my uh, uh, yani opinion, as little as you intending to do good. You saying, subhanallah, is a one good deed. It's not an atom weight, it's a big deed. It's a, a decent de size deed. And that hasan is turned into 10 deeds and so on and so forth. An atom weight of good, ikhwani, you'll see it. That atom weight of good, that dollar, that five cents, that five dollars, that twenty dollars, whatever it is that you've done on the day of judgment, you will be looking for an atom weight of good. An atom weight of good, Ikhwani, can save you on that day. An atom weight of good can be the decider, can be sort of what will tip your scale over on the day of judgment. An atom weight of good could mean potentially hellfire or jannah. That's how much it is. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us in the hadith that one of you will be talking to his Lord and Allah will question you on the day of judgment. Do you remember that sin? Do you remember this sin? You, you know, and Allah will ask you about things and the person will look to his right, look to his left, look around him. فَلَا يَرَى إِلَّا النَّارِ All the person will see is hellfire. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam followed that by saying فَاتَّقُ النَّارَ وَلَوْ بِشِقِّ تَمْرَ Protect yourselves from hell fire, even if it's by donating half a date. Half a date. See the atom weight, Ikhwani? Do not belittle any good you do, even if it's a smile in your brother's face, even if it's a small donation, even if it's a small dua, dhikr, whatever it is. Do not, do not belittle the deeds that you do. Do not belittle the deeds that you do. Khwani, I want you to imagine yourself on that day. The heavens are destroyed. The oceans are turning into fire. The mountains are being destroyed. People are being thrown into hell fire for their deeds. Every prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Nabi is saying, Nafsi, Nafsi, myself, myself. And me and you are there. What would you imagine? If, if you had the opportunity to communicate to yourself in this dunya, what would you say? On that day, in the day, on the day of judgment, if you had the ability to speak to yourself now, to communicate with yourself in the last ten nights of Ramadan, what would you say? What would you need the most on that day? What would you need the most? Those extra kilos of sweets that we're eating, the extra Netflix movies and the, and the programs that they're viewing. What would you need? Those extra hours of social media. Those. Um, what would you need? 
If a person does an atom weight of good, they shall see it. Brothers and sisters, we're in the last stretch of Ramadan. And I understand it is, has been a very distinguished Ramadan by, by the Muslims being sort of spread out. By not having any community gatherings, iftars, taraweeh, juma, jama'at, etc. And I can't deny that that will take a toll on any person. Their motivation to do good, to push them, etc. However, Ikhwani, if you are on the Day of Judgment and you're able to speak to yourself today, I'm sure if you can say anything, you'll be screaming. You'll be yelling, Oh Fulan, Oh Rami, Oh Muhammad, Oh Fatima, Oh Sarah, Oh whatever it is, Oh whoever you are, do good. Make sure you get Laylat al Qadr. Make sure you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure you return or you repent from their sins. Make sure you pay off that zakat. Make sure you uh, ask forgiveness. Make sure whatever it is, you'll ask, you'll beg yourself, do as much good as possible. Do as much good as possible. Remember that these last 10 nights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us by placing a night in them that's equivalent to worshipping Allah for a thousand months. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرِ تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالرُّوحُ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ مِّنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ سَلَامٌ هِيَ حَتَّى مَطْلَعِ الْفَجْرِ We have revealed it. What is it? The Quran, Ikhwani. The Quran was descended down in, on the night of power. لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ What would make you know what Laylatul Qadr is? Laylatul Qadr خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ The night of power, Laylatul Qadr, this night, which is in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, is better than a thousand months. Better than 83 years. Imagine if you donate on Laylatul Qadr and Allah accepts it from you. Imagine you pray, you make dua on Laylatul Qadr. Imagine you recite a juz of Quran on Laylatul Qadr. Imagine if you worship Allah on Laylatul Qadr. You'll be given the equivalent of a thousand months of you committing that deed. I want you to picture yourself on the Day of Judgment, and then you've got yourself here, and you've got the opportunity to capture Laylatul Qadr. Bi'idhnillahi Azza wa Jal. What would you tell yourself? Yes, I understand sometimes we're tired, and the alarm rings for suhoor or for qiyamul layl. We're tired. We're tired. We, يعني, in the past, we had the pleasure and the, uh, and the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to pray taraweeh and qiyam in the mosques. This year we don't. This year we don't. Understand, it's, it's, it's taking a toll on us. However, ikhwani, Ramadan's not, there's not much to go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, ayyaman ma'dudat, very few days. Countable, you could count these days. You could count these days. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even mentioned it yani, just to make, it, make us um, yani, realize how easy it is and how very short this Ramadan is. Ikhwani, you're on the day of judgment and you're speaking to yourself here. What would you say? Every time your, your nafs, your, yani, your, 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 you're getting a bit lazy, you're getting a bit tired, etc., push yourselves. Remember yourself on the Day of Judgment. Remember yourself needing that deed. Remember that a person will come on the Day of Judgment. He will need a hasana, one good deed to enter Jannah. His own mother would not give it to him. Your mother would come to you on the Day of Judgment, as, as it's narrated. Your mother would come to you saying, Ya Bunay, oh my son, oh my daughter, I looked after you in my stomach for nine months. I did not sleep when you were sick. I looked after you during your life. I did this, I did that. Hasanatan wahid. Give me one good deed. You say, Nafsi, Nafsi, myself, myself. The prophets of Allah on that day of judgment will say, Nafsi, Nafsi. Do you know what the currency is on the day of judgment? It's not dollars and cents. It's not PayPal. It's not um, uh, Bitcoin. It's not Wallah, Visa, MasterCard, and all those things. No, no, no. It's فَمَيَّعْمَ الْمِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرًا Whomsoever does an atom weight of good will see. The currency there is hasanat. 
These are the days. These are the nights, Ikhwani. The best form of investment for ourselves is to invest in the last nights of Ramadan, to attain Laylatul Qadr, to attain being saved, our necks being saved from hellfire, to attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He accepts from us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the steadfastness that we need. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has mercy on us and the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayt ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا عافنا واعف عنا آتي مرنا تقواها زكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليه ومولاها اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر اللهم بلغنا ليلة القدر اللهم ثبتنا يا رب العالمين اللهم تقبل منا صلاتنا وصيامنا وركوعنا وسجودنا وكل أعمالنا يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما صفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته